Hello, everybody. Is anybody joining us? Is anybody registering for this yet? Hello, hello. I know that people are coming in, but I can't see your notes. Are you writing anything yet? I don't think anyone has written anything. We'll be happy to read your greetings. Greetings to all of you. Nice to see you. Welcome, everyone. Let's begin to share and invite our friends. Share publicly. Invite people publicly, okay? So let's just invite people and give them a public invitation and let them be able to come in, as many as one, to come and join us. There is a hot topic here. The prostitution of tithes and offering is the, the yesterday's topic was so, so hot. So many people came in for it. And um, let's invite our friends today. Maybe a few of them will come back. Uh, Uri Yomi has invited. He's the only one who has invited all the friends. Let's invite all our friends. Meanwhile. So let's go share the link and invite everyone that we know. And as you are doing that, I want to talk a little bit more about the Okay, Monica also has invited her friends. The prostitution of Titan offering. And the topic of today is give to the poor and become poor. If you give to the poor, does that make you to become poor? It's a question mark. But that's not actually not a question mark by some people. This is a whole doctrine that is now being spread in some charismatic Pentecostal churches that don't give to the poor. If you give to the poor, you become poor. Can you believe it that anybody who is a Christian will ever say that? Well, that's the world we're living in right now. And there are people who actually, you know, believe this. And there are people who are spreading this message. I'm preaching this message as well. That if you give to the poor, you become poor. So, welcome everybody. If you have already shared the link, we'll be ready to start. We'll be ready to go. So, as you are coming in, make sure you invite all your friends. It's a very interesting topic. Do you become poor by giving to poorer people than yourself? <laughs> that is the topic of today. Does giving to the poor people make you poorer? And the idea behind that is that all the money comes to the church. Just bring to the church because that's where God is and that's what makes you rich. If you give to the poor, you will not bring it to the church. The logic is very simple. So the poor could be competing with the <laughs> interest of the church and the pastor. So here we go. Before I you know, go ahead with today's topic. I would like to say that uh, thank you, uh, Yetunde, Stitches. These are the people who have invited their friends already. Go ahead and invite your friends as well, publicly. Invite your public friends. Invite everybody. That's what it means. So after yesterday's message, by the way, today we have 20, almost 22,000 people who have viewed yesterday's message in 24 hours so 24 hours later 22,000 people have watched yesterday's message uh, which means this topic is really an interesting topic for a lot of people but there were also some questions coming in already from the people who came in to see this program yesterday 
So people came in yesterday and they started asking questions. Asking questions. And one of the questions that was asked and is what I'm going to answer today. I'm going to be answering some of the questions that people were asking. Uh, so the first question I want to ask in that regard is, I mean, that they're asking me, I'm going to be treating each question every day. Question that was asked yesterday. Pastor, calm down. Is this against give? Are you teaching against giving in its entirety? Are you teaching against giving entirely? Am I teaching against giving entirely? No, I would like to say no. I'm not teaching against giving, of course, in, in its entirety. That's not possible. I cannot be a Christian and teach against giving. Any Christian knows that giving is part of the cardinal part of Christianity. It's, it's the cornerstone of Christianity. I mean, our God himself proved to us that Christianity is all about giving. God gave his only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but inherit eternal life. So Christianity is all about giving. And if you have ever read the Bible before, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, it's, the Bible says that true religion is to take care of the widow, to take care of, of, of the poor, to take care of the orphans, to take care of the strangers. Old Testament is full of days. That, so the whole of the Bible is always telling us there are three categories of people that the Bible cares for, or four categories of people that the Bible is always calling us to take care of. These are the uh, widows, the orphans, uh, the, um, the strangers, and the strangers. So those three categories of people, the orphans, the fatherless, that is, the widows, the... Um, and the, yeah, and the strangers. But God is always telling us to give to these kind of people. And God talks about giving to these people more than he talks about giving to tithe and offering. Can you believe that? So, you know, giving in the Bible must be placed uh, according to God's priority. We must put giving and define giving as God defines it. So God defines giving uh, as so giving to the poor more than any other giving. In, according to God's rating, tithe is not number one, according to God's rating. In fact, even every time the Bible talks about tithe, it's always talking about, apart from, of course, Mal Malachi, most of the time when the Bible refers to tithe, it's always referring to tithe as something to be also used to take care of the widows and the orphans, the fatherless and the strangers. So, and then he always adds to that the Levites, so the church. So, three categories of people in the old Bible that God cares especially about and he tells us to be given to. In the Old Testament, there were four categories. And number four category that we are supposed to be given to in the Old Testament are, is, is the, of course, the, lev I mean, the, the poor, the, uh, the fatherless, and the widows. And the, and the strangers. And then it also has the Levite there. Um, so, so I'm not talking against giving altogether. And I'm not against tight and offering. So let me make my position clear. clear. I'm not against tight and offering. I'm not even against giving tight to, offer to the church and offering to the church also. But I say only if you believe in the pastor, in the minister that is there, in the church, in the integrity, and in what they are using their titan offering, your titan offering for, then you, could, you can take your titan offering there. But you must know what they are using it for and believe in the integrity of that leadership. So if they are using it to pay their bills, let them do it. But you must know that, yes, they need it. But we shouldn't be using tithe, giving titan offering the way we have been taught to give it right now which is just give anyhow. 10% of all your money belongs to the church. That is not true. It doesn't belong to the church. It belongs to God. There is a difference between tithe and offering belonging to God and tithe and offering belonging to, to, the, to, the, to, to the church. So when he says bring it to the storehouse, it's not talking about the church. The definition of the storehouse doesn't have anything to do with the church at all. You go and study storehouse in the Old Testament. 
Bring, bring the house, I mean, bring the tithe and offering to the storehouse. It's a storehouse. It's like a barn. It's like storage facilities where they usually bring, you know, when we are talking about tithe in the Old Testament, we are not talking about money at all. So talking about tithe, it is not money they are talking about. It is always about yam, fruit, cassava, uh, you know, pineapple, potatoes, uh, you know, all kind of food products, apple, you know, all kind of food products. So it was the, in the in the Old Testament when we they talk about tithe, bring your tithe. They were not talking about money at all. It doesn't have anything to do with money. But today we have corrupted that. We have polluted it. And the only thing we refer to when we talk about tithe and offering is money. So in the in, because they were always talking about food produce, and the fr food produce needed to be stored. That is why they were always talking about storage. So storehouse, bring all the tithe and offering to my storehouse. It's me talking about storage, storage facility. It's talking about, you know, barns. Bring them to the barn. Then, but what happens after you bring them to the barn? After you go to the storage, after you bring your tithe and offering to the storage, the leaders of the community, the leaders of the society, they divide those tithe and offering among the poorest in the society. They divide the tithe and offering among the destitute, among the poor, among the uh, widows, among the orphans, the fatherless, and among the foreigners, people who are disenfranchised in the society. That is what tithe and offering, and of course, to the Levite. To the Levite, because the Levites were not allowed to walk that time. The only work they were doing was to minister in the church. So that's why they were also categorized in this group of people. Otherwise, you know, but the way it is being preached today is as if storehouse, bring the, all the tithe to the storehouse, as if the storehouse is equivalent to church, as if storehouse means synonymous to the church. But that is according to Malachi. But that is not what he's talking about. But in that same Malachi, of course, it also talks about so that there will be food in my house. So, you see, he's talking about food. You see, he's talking about food. He's not talking about money. So, that should make us to know that whenever we are talking about tithe and offering, it is about produce. You know, the produce of your work. The, the, the things that you produce. That, that is what he was talking about. But now, he's talking about storehouse. And then it, it mentioned also in my house. So you remember, because that means that the part of the money that is being, I mean, part of the produce that is being collected should also serve the house of God. Part of the produce or the resources of the tithe and offering should also provide for the people who serve in the church, the Levites and the priests and things like that. And that is one of the categories of the people that tithe and offering were meant for. So, but unfortunately, because church members these days don't study the Bible for themselves, church members are, you know, always, uh, you know, believing what pastors say. So we just do things blindly. So I'm not against giving at all. The only thing that I want to address and I wish and that the church of today must admit and correct is that tithe and offering, it is a fallacy and it is, it is a, mm, it is it is a false doctrine to think that tithe and offering is only meant for the church. In Matthew 23, 23, the only place where Jesus Christ spoke about tithe, only one place in the New Testament where Jesus Christ spoke about tithe, he said that some of you Pharisees, religious people, you have elevated tithe. This is exactly what the Pharisees were doing. This is what the Sadducees and Pharisees were doing in the time of Jesus. They elevated tithe so much that they were using it as an excuse. They were now saying, because we are bringing tithe to the church, we could not take care of the poor, we could not take care of the destitute, we could not take care of the widows, and we could not even give to our own parents. So that's what Jesus was addressing in Matthew 23, 23. And he said, you are hypocrites, hypocrites and you are wicked. And he said, woe unto you for doing that. That is what Jesus is saying right now to the pastors of today. To any pastor that is preaching that tithe and offering is only for the church, God is telling that pastor, woe unto you. 
If any pastor today is preaching that bring all tithe and offering only to the church, the person is supposed to read Matthew 23, 23. God himself is causing that person. Jesus himself is causing that person. And Jesus is causing those pastors and telling them, woe unto you. Why woe unto you? Because Jesus said, you have elevated the law, you have elevated tithe and offering to the detriment of the most important things in the Bible, of the most important commands of the, of the law. And what are the most important commands of the law? Do mercy. Be, no, show loving kindness to the home, I mean, to the, to the destitute, to the poor, to the, to the disenfranchised. That is always more elevated. If you don't believe me, let's go to the Bible. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Matthew, I mean, Matthew 23. Matthew chapter 23. So that you don't, you don't need to believe me. Let's search the scripture together and you will see with your own eyes. So this is not a doctrine from Pastor Sunday. This is the doctrine and the attitude of Jesus to Titan offering. So actually in the mind of God and the mind of Jesus, your tithe and offering is first of all meant for the destitute in your village and in your town, in your neighborhood. Your tithe and offering is first of all meant to take care of all the destitute in your place. Your tithe and offering belongs to God. You are supposed to be God's representative, you yourself. You are God's steward. You are supposed to be the steward of God to take what belongs to the God, what God has blessed you with, what the ten percent of what belongs to Him, and use it and go in the name of God and come in the name of God and say, "Okay, I am a believer, and I have now brought what God has brought me with. I mean, He blessed me with ten percent of it. I have brought it to take care of your needs. I see that you cannot send your children to school. I see that you have hospital bills." I see that there is no food for you to eat. This is what tithe and offering is supposed to be for. First of all, only after you have done that, because Jesus said, I was hungry, you did not feed me. I was naked, you did not clothe me. Only after you have done that, then you will remember also your church where you are being fed. Your church where you go to. Because I'm a pastor too. You know, for me to be preaching this means that my own members too are listening. So it means that I, you know, I, but we must... We either going to preach against our against God, or we are going to, because we are defending our own names and our own interests because we want people to bring the money to us, or we should preach the truth and let people know the truth, because it is only the truth that sets people free. So let's go ahead. I've opened. I hope you have opened uh, Matthew twenty three already. Matthew twenty three twenty three. Have you opened it, guys? I'm not seeing their comments so for some reason. <laughs> I'm sure they are writing some things. But there are no comments here. Yeah, let me see. They should be writing some things. If you have not shared the link to this message, please go ahead and share the link, please. Let's go ahead and share. Share, 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 share. That is uh, Mayo was uh, Mayo was language that I'm using for you today. Share, share, share. So have you opened uh, Matthew? Matthew 23, 23. It says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. If Jesus has been alive today, if Jesus has been here today, so people are attacking me and saying, Pastor, you are spoiling. In fact, a pastor wrote me from London and said, Pastor, what do you mean? How do you want us to survive? We pastors, is this, who are pastors, especially pastors of small churches. And I feel for you, but if you are going to be dependent on, the fa on false doctrine and on false teaching to survive, you are only thinking about your survival. You are not thinking about the interest of God. You are not thinking about God's burden. You are not th th uh, thinking about God's concern. If God's concern is not your concern, if you are not concerned about the truth, if you are not concerned that you think should be done properly and normally, you are only concerned about the fact that, okay, uh, you know, how will you survive? Then it is this kind of egocentrism that is spoiling the gospel. This is why we are, you know, a lot of Christians are saying we are, we are corrupt and you should not, we should not just be concerned about our, our own 
con our own belly. We should be concerned about, we are servants of God. We are supposed to advocate for what God said we should advocate for. We should be talking about what God said we should talk about. Not just talk about anything that profits us. This is not our personal empire. This is not our personal business. So if you are a pastor today, or even if you are some of those, because God wants to deliver members, but it is these same members that are fighting me, and I say we shouldn't talk about these things. So if you are one of those members who is defending your pastor, who is defending your church, who is defending your denomination, and say, Pastor Sunday cannot be right. How can he be saying these things? Okay, make God come listen. Open your own Bible. I'm sure you have opened it right now, right? Okay, make you open your own and see with your own koro koro eye. You come and use your own eye to see what Jesus himself said about that. The only place where, I mean, actually maybe there are two places. There is another place uh, earlier on, you know, but the only place where Jesus immediately um, directly addressed the question of tithe is this place. So what does he say about it? Let's see. Matthew 23, 23. He says, woe to you scribes and Pharisees. That is like pastors. So. Woe to you hypocrites. Hypocrites. So why did he call the pastors and Pharisees and the scribes hypocrites? He said, because you pay tight. It is because of tight that Jesus was rebuking them. You pay tight of mint. You see, it's not money. So first of all, let's say to that one, that they are telling you that money, 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 all this money mongering that we are doing in churches, it is all out of greed, though. Make you know for now. You have to know now. It is all because of greed. It's not because of God commanded it. It doesn't have anything to do with God at all. God didn't command that you should bring money. All these teachings about money, this uh, this offering, that offering, that one offering, that one. He, he, God, when God instituted it, he was not talking about money at all. Because just God was even saying, money is mammon. Either you are going to be submissive to God or you are going to be submissive to mammon. But most people who talk about money, they are servants and slaves of mammon, of money. So it's not money God is talking about here. So even the only place where Jesus spoke about tithe, he was talking about mint and anise and cumin. He was talking about produce that people were you know, producing. Now, you could say money is an equivalent, yes, equivalent, but why are we overemphasizing money? Why is it that we are always talking about money, 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 money? The spirit of the world has hijacked the church, oh. The spirit of the world, the spirit of mammon has hijacked, especially the charismatic churches, especially the Pentecostal churches, we have been hijacked and we don't even know it. Okay, we say, okay, money answers all things. Oh, yes, money answers all things. Go, go make money. Go work for the money somewhere else. Go make money somewhere. But don't turn the pulpit and the church to a money-mongering society where every time, everything, more emphasis is being placed on money than on God himself. More emphasis is being placed on money than on the word of God. More emphasis is being placed on money than on other virtues that God himself promotes. So Jesus here is saying, woe to you if you promote money, if you talk about tithe and offering more than you talk about any other thing, woe unto you. That's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, woe unto any pastor, any scribe, any Pharisee, any minister that talks about tithe and offering more than any other things in their church. If you lay too much emphasis on tithe and offering, Jesus is telling you now, the author and finisher of our faith, the owner of this faith that we are saying, Christianity we are practicing, God is saying, woe Woe unto you. So this is what the Pharisees did. And God caused them. Jesus caused them. Because woe is like cursing. You know what I mean? Not like cursing like that. But woe unto you means that's like curse. That's like horrible thing. No? That's like, you know, <laughs> woe unto you, Jesus is saying. Why is Jesus calling them woe? Why is Jesus saying woe unto them? Why is Jesus saying abusive word to them or cross to them? Because he says, for you pay tithe. You teach people to pay tithe. All right? And have neglected. And have neglected the weightier matters of the law. So tithe is good. But when you elevate tithe too much. 
And the reason why these Pharisees, Jesus knows their heart. The reason why they were elevating tithe so much, the reason why they were elevating tithe and offering more, pay emphasis on tithe and offering, but not on giving to the poor, not on taking care of the widows, not on taking care of the fatherless, not on taking care of the stranger. The reason why they are saying tithe, 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 bring, is because of their daily. Because it takes care of them. So Jesus knew exactly what their motives were. Jesus knew it's because they want to build their own empire. They want to build the biggest church. They want to big, big, build the biggest buildings. They want to build the biggest, you know, you know, church. They want to brag and say, we have the biggest church. We have the biggest things. The same problem today. And this is what Jesus told them that day. And this is what Jesus is still telling them today. Any church, any pastor that is overemphasizing tithe and offering, God said, woe will come upon them. Woe unto them. Unto pastors. Why? Because they overemphasize. They put what Jesus made secondary and put it as primary. What Jesus made as the secondary thing that is not the most important, they went and make it the most important. Overworld. What are the things that Jesus said should really be most important in church? What are the things that the church will be preaching more than any other thing? What are the topics that should be the most important topics in the church today? The most important church, I mean, topics that we should be preaching in church is what Jesus called the weightier matters of the law. Weightier is more weighty. There are some topics in the church, in the kingdom of God, that should be weightier than the topic of tithe. There are other topics, many things that we should be preaching to people, that we should be teaching the people to do and practice more than we are talking about tithe. We should downplay tithe and we should even tell people when we talk about tithe that they should use that tithe to do the weightier matters of the law. These are the weightier matters for which tithe itself was instituted. Tithe itself was instituted for, because of the weightier matters of the law. And the weightiest matters of the law, what are they? Make we show you, you tell me, show me. I go show you a day here. You see here. Matthew 23, 23, the weightier matters of the law, is said, justice. So the money for tithe that we are all gathering, you should use your tithe to execute justice. Is there anybody that has been oppressed in your society? That is what tithe and offering is supposed for. You are supposed to use your tithe and offering to execute, just to seek for justice. To see that everything works evenly in your society. To see that there is righteousness, there is justice in your society. There is justice to the poor. There is justice to the, the franchise. There is justice to the fatherless. There is justice to the homeless. There is justice to the orphans. There, there is justice to the widows. There, there, justice is more elevated in the eyes of God. The pursuit of justice. Social justice, social justice, the pursuit of justice is more important in God's eyes and tight. And there are almost there are no churches today that are preaching on justice. Almost no churches today preach on justice. Almost no church today pushes members of the church to go and begin to preach and begin to use their money and to even use that tithe and offering to do justice. And what is justice? If there is a hungry person in your street and you are not feeding that person, that's lack of justice. If there is somebody in your city that cannot eat, that is because you are not executing justice. If there is anybody in your city that is being oppressed, that is being taken advantage of, it's because of your responsibility. Your money should be going to those places. That is what the Acts of the Apostles did. So when they brought tithe and offering to the Acts of the Apostles, they took the money, they brought them to the feet of Jesus, and they took that money from tithe and offering and used it to say to all church members to take care of Christians who are deprived, who are disenfranchised, who don't have justice. Justice is more important than tithe and offering. Justice is more important than tithe and offering. Justice, execution of justice, the seeking of justice, seeking of God's justice in the society, seeking of equity, ju God, just judgment of God in the society is more important than tithe and offering. 
And pastors should be paying more emphasis on preaching on social activeness, social justice, you know, involvement of every member in different spheres of the society, going to bring righteousness, going to bring holiness, going to bring right, you know, justice. We should be preaching more of that than we are preaching tight and offering. And you should even be preaching to the members that they should be using their tight and offering because tight and offering is only the means. It's only the means. It is the means through which justice will be carried out. It is the means through which you know, righteousness will be established. It is every Christian that is supposed to use that type of offering to prosecute justice, to bring to pass justice, and to seek for justice in the society. That is what everybody should be doing first of all with their tithe and offering. He could still take some of the tithe and offering to the church if he believes in the pastor, but that was in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, God doesn't even put Levite there at all. You will not see the word Levite, that you should give tithe and offering to Levite or, or, or something. But if you, but the, what, what is being propagated in the New Testament is this, is that anybody that is serving you spiritually, like a pastor, you just bless them. According to your heart, it's not me that should become campaigning to you and say, and you are not blessing me now. Why are you not blessing me? Yeah, you are, but the Bible says you should bless me. You see, it's written now. <laughs> it, it, I'm, you, I'm supposed to minister to you so well. I'm supposed to serve you so good that you want to be grateful. It is out of your own attitude. It is out of your own free will that you bring to the pastor that serves you spiritually so that you want to bless them materially and you want to give them double honor because of they have served you with double honor too. But when it comes to tithe and offering, Jesus said, woe unto them, woe unto the pastors, woe unto the GOs, woe unto the bishops, woe unto every minister, woe unto them that elevate the role of tithe and offering more than the weightier matters of the law. Woe unto these people. It's not my word. It is the word of Jesus. So if you want to curse me, you are, you are cursing the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's the one who used that word. It's the Jesus that said, woe unto you, Pharisees and scribes. Why? Because you have elevated. Because you have elevated the role of Titan offering to be bringing to you, to be coming to your church. You have overemphasized it more than you have emphasized the weightier matters of the law. And so what are the weightier matters of the law? Once again, see, Matthew 23, 23, the weightier matters of the law that were neglected, he said, you have neglected the weightier matters of the law, which is justice. In the, in the eye of God, justice is more important than tithe and offering. Number two, mercy. Love, ki loving kindness, mercy, loving kindness, Doing loving kindness. So that is why you should never take money to anybody's church. If you see people around you who are hungry, I was hungry, you didn't feed me. I was naked, you didn't clothe me. You should use that money to feed that hungry man. You should use that money to clothe that naked man. You should use that money to put money on the table of that family. You should use that money to take care of the one in prison. You should use that money to take care of the one who's, you know, needing hospital bills. That is first of all, the weightier matters of the law. These are the things that we are supposed to require to do. This is true religion. In James chapter 1, he said, real religion, true religion, is to visit the fatherless, the homeless, I mean, the, 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 the orphans and the, 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 the widows, and go and do good. That is what you are supposed to be doing with your tithe and offering. And Jesus is saying here that woe unto them, woe unto anybody that teaches that tithe and offering should only be brought to the church. Because that is what the scribes and the Pharisees were doing. They were teaching that tithe and offering is only supposed to be brought to the church. That is why the weightier matters of the law were being neglected. Anybody that teaches today that tithe and offering is only meant for the church, they are the ones that are indirectly saying, don't use your tithe and offering to go and take care of the one that is hungry. Don't use your tithe and offering to go and take care of the orphans and the fatherless. Don't use your tithe and offering to bring it here to us. It is, it is lust, greed, and egocentrism that informs this kind of teaching. This kind, so, and Jesus condemned it. But today, no pastor is teaching from this thing. Past, no pastors are not talking from this. 
Pastors are doing, they are pretending we are removing our eyes as if we don't see what Jesus has said. The Jesus himself who started this church. We are contradicting his words. We are contradicting his message. We are doing what we want to do. We are opposing him left, right and center. We are against the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus said, woe unto such people. He said, because the most important thing that a church is meant to do, the most important thing that religious organization is meant to do is justice, mercy. The most important thing Christian is supposed to do, loving kindness, justice, mercy, and faith. Use to, the money to propagate faith. Use your money to do that. But it, goes, it gets worse. I have a message. That is the way it is called. Is tight only meant for the church? We had the link yesterday. I think somebody should put the link from the YouTube. Is tight only meant for the church? Let's put the link again. Because I dealt with it and I with all the scriptures that proves that tight and offering is not just meant for the church. Church is only one of the things you can do with your tight and offering. Only one. But not the most important ones even. Only one, the most important thing that God emphasized more in the Bible are the orphans, fatherless, needy, hungry, you no know, naked, hospital, you no know, uh, all those things. Just the disenfranchised. That's Christianity. So now that scripture continues to say, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. That's Matthew 23 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, for you pay tight. Of mint and anise and cumin, which means it's not money. We shouldn't be talking about too much about money in church. It is not, even tithe itself, it's not about money. But we today, we are talking about tithe as if it's only money. But this will pay tithe of produce. And say, you are paying your tithe and you tell people to pay tithe, all right? But then you neglect not even that you tell people not to do this good, weightier matters of the Lord, but you neglect. Why, why did you neglect them? Because you are carried away by the desire, the greed so that people should be bringing tight, tight to you, to you, to you, to you. That is why the apostles in the New Testament learned from this. And what they did is that when they brought tight and offering to them in the house of the apostles, they distributed, they looked for immediately. People who are in need. They look for people who, who need justice. They look for people who are poor. They look for people who are disenfranchised. The orphans, the fatherless, the widows. They immediately distributed. In fact, in the Old Testament, all the money in the New Testament, the money, they even had the whole apostles being responsible to take care of, you know, distribution. It's all about distribution. It's not that it's only the church and the pastor that takes everything. It is what people bring is for people. First of all, first of all, for the people in the church itself, and then for the people outside of the church. Today is the rather the opposite. There are church members who are suffering. There are church members who cannot send their children to school. There are church members who cannot even, you know, pay their school fees. There are church members who cannot even attend schools that are even belonging to the church. There are church members who cannot even afford three square meal, and other church members will not even pay attention to them. And they are coming to the same church. They are sitting near each other. And they will not even pay attention. And the reason for this is because somebody has told them to give to the poor. Means you, know, you are going to be poor yourself. They will infect you with poverty. In fact, I see that I'm not going to be able to teach about that today. I'm going to teach about that tomorrow. Because I, I'd call it, change that title. I mean, remove that part from the, uh, the other part. Which says, just put part two. Prostitu no, prostitution or some part two. Rather than this or the, the one of the poor, I will do it tomorrow. So every night, I'm going to be talking about this topic. Every night, even if it's going to take me one year, I'm going to be talking about this every night. At least for one month, I'm going to be banging on this, telling the truth, so that they, we will deliver the church from this false doctrine that has hijacked the church. This greed, this spirit of mammon that has hijacked the church and we don't even know. Because all the big men of God are doing it. Because all the people we know are practicing it, we think it must be right. But Jesus is saying what should be practiced and what should be propagated, what we should be promoting are the weightier matters of the law. And the weightier matters of the law are loving kindness, love, 
Use your money to promote love. Use your tithe and offering to promote loving acts of love and loving kindness. Use your money, your tithe and offering to promote justice. Use your money to promote mercy. And use your judge, uh, uh, money to promote faith. Then it, it goes on, Jesus goes on and says, This you ought to have done. This you ought to have done. He was talking to the uh, scribes and Pharisees. Yes, you should have brought your tithe and offering. So that is why I personally am against people who say there is no tithe and offering. You should have, but it doesn't mean give it to the church. Or he didn't say this you should have brought to the church. No, you sh but it, it means that tithe, you give tithe. Okay, keep on giving tithe. To whom? To all the people designated to be given it to. Give to the poor, give to the orphanage, I mean, to, I mean to the fatherless, give to the widows, give to the strangers, give to the people and give to the Levite. And give to the Levite. So you can divide that, your tithe and offering among all these things that Jesus himself, I mean that the Old Testament illuminated. So you can give giving your tithe, but there are some people today who say don't even give tithe at all. I don't believe in that. Tithe belongs to God. Tight, you all of us are obliged to be giving tight to set ourselves away from, I mean, free from greed. You know, even for our own sake, we all should give tight, we all should give offering, but not just to the church. That is where my own something is. Do, is don't bring tight and offering only to the pastor or only to the church. Tight and offering is meant for all these violent people. So Jesus said, Do tight, do tight and offering too. No problem. This you should have done. Without leaving the orders undone. You see, don't you have an excuse and say that, okay, because I'm giving tithe and offering to the church, now I don't have a project to, to feed the poor. Or because I'm giving tithe and offering to the church, so I, can, I, I don't have a project to visit prison, people in prison. Because I'm giving tithe and offering to the church, I don't have a calling to go and take up people, yeah, people in the hospital. Oh, because I'm taking my tithe and offering to the church, I cannot feed the homeless and the poor and the fatherless and things like that. Jesus said, no, there is tithe and offering you are giving shouldn't be an excuse. Rather, tithe and offering should be the key, the instrument for doing the weightier matters of the law. So, Jesus continues and says, This you ought to have done and leave it without leaving the other. So, we still have tithe, but we use it to do weightier matters of the law. Then Jesus said, Blind guys who strain out on a gnat and swallow the camel. So, blind is leaving, leading the, 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 the blind. Then, in another place there, he also says, You are hypocrites because you are saying, because you are bringing tithe and offering to the church, now you cannot afford to take care of your mother and father. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you know, there are a lot of people right now, and there are churches who preach that as long as you are paying your tithe and offering and giving your, you bring your money to the church, to the prophet, prophet offering, those are your spiritual parents. So don't take care of your, you, you don't necessarily, you, you're taking care of the church and of your spiritual parents is more important than taking care of your. This is exactly what Jesus preached about. He preached against this. That why should you use tithe? Because you are bringing something to the church as an excuse not to take care of your parents. This is exactly the opposite of what God said. Because the, your parents, widows, and people like that are more important than, you know, using tithe. Use that tithe of, of even your tithe. Use it rather to take care of your poor parents, of your relatives, of your uncle, of your brother. People who are poor, use your tithe to take care of them. It will be more right in the eyes of God and in the eyes of Jesus than to bring it to church and to say then you cannot uh, take care of, of, of people who are really in need. So, uh, you know, a lot of things that could be said. But I want to use this opportunity to, I wanted to read some of the comments, but... I can't see any comment. Uh, do you have the comments? You go and read the whole of Matthew 23. You'll be shocked. But read it without any religious blindness. Just read it clearly with open minded. Open mind.
you know, uh, somebody has said, but how should the pastor survive? If next, you know, in fact, the Apostle Paul himself said he doesn't want to be a burden to the, to the members. But today, pastors have become burden to members. Apostle Paul said, no, I, do. I will not like to be a burden. He said, of being a burden, I will go and walk with my hands. So he went and walked with his hands so that he would not be a burden. But today we are saying, you know, we are making, we don't want to work. Pastors don't want to work. They want to go and uh, exploit and, you know, exploit their members and making them to bring money rather than them going to work for their, for, you know, let, let them go and work first and let the members see that they are trying and then let the members themselves, you know, you know, help them as a result. Anyway, let me ask, any one of you want to add anything? Anybody wants to, yeah, please. Let me get Mrs. Banjoko. Come, come. She, she, what, do, what are you hearing? What do you think, you know, you are hearing? And what is God tell, you know, what telling? What is happening in your heart right now, in your spirit right now with these things you are hearing? Um, hello, everybody. Um, I, I think like everybody else, I'm hearing this message for the first time. Um, this details. Um, I'm very sober right now. I'm very sober. I have to relearn. I have to think. I have to really understand what God expects from me and from all of us as Christians. You know, um, as I'm listening to Pastor speak and I'm listening to him um, talk to us about the word of God and the heart of God, I can hear the truth in what he's saying. I can hear the truth in what he's saying. And the beauty is that as he's talking, I'm looking at the scriptures, and I'm someone who likes to search, I like to analyze, I like to make sure the facts are facts. So I'm looking at things, and I'm asking myself questions like, okay, what, what is God actually saying? I can read, I can hear, I can, I can find information myself. So I would ask everyone to do the same thing. What do you see? What can you read? What, what ministers to you? Thank God for the Holy Spirit that leads all of us to all truth. And I think it's time we begin to look at the truth around us. I think it's time we open our eyes and look at our family, look at people in our communities, look at um, friends, neighbors, look at the orphans, look at the widows, and ask ourselves why we are waiting for another organization or why we are waiting for a church or somebody else to help them. Why can't we help them directly? Why must I just give them only a bit or, you know, just a little gift when I can do a lot more. Because somehow I have never thought of it as my position to do that. It's not like I want to be wicked, but in my mind, personally for me, I always thought the first thing to do is just pack all my, um, my tithes first to church. And then whatever I have left, if at all, whatever I have left for myself, whatever extra there is, then I can begin to help people. But... As I'm listening now, I'm, I'm understanding that that's wrong. That's wrong. That, that really doesn't make any sense. And I don't know why I used to think it was correct before. So for me, I think personally, I have a lot of reading to do. I have a lot of learning to do. And thank God again for the Holy Spirit. I, I pray that the Holy Spirit ministers to each and every one of you listening right now and brings you to the truth. The truth will set us free. You know, the beauty is that pastor is also a, Dr. Son is a pastor himself, you know, like we all know. He's a pastor himself, so why would he want to derail us or tell us what is not true? Why would, what, what, is, his, what is his gain? You know, so we're, t we're talking to or hearing from somebody who himself is an authority of the word, who himself knows the word, you know, and I think it's beautiful that we ourselves can also go into the word, and see if we do really, really ourselves. So thank God for revelation, thank God for knowledge, thank God for wisdom, and I pray that um, we all learn and grow. You know, we all learn and grow. I don't know what other thoughts are coming to mind right now, but I, I think for me personally, I'm a bit of, I'm, I'm sober. I'm in shock and I'm sober, and I'm just asking myself who I'm going to help, what difference I'm going to make tomorrow. You know, what, what am I going to do? I'm hearing this. And I can, in just in my mind right now, I can see so many different people I can help right now that will change their lives very quickly. Just little things I can do for them that will change their lives and bring so much joy. And I think as Christians, we're supposed to carry the kingdom of God in us. We're meant to carry love, 
you know so i need to find and use all those opportunities where i can actually give love to people i can share and help people and not because i want something back but just because i have been fortunate to be blessed I've been fortunate to have more than many people and I can make a difference in their life. So I would, I would um, beseech every single one of you who is listening right now, look around you. How can you be a problem solver? How can you help people around you? What difference can your existence make to people around you? What can you do? You know, I think often as, as well, you know, um, innocently, we may carry our ties to church and if only. And if you feel that's correct, that's fine. If you feel indeed that your ties will be used right for the right things. If you can have a chance to investigate or ask questions to know where your tithes are going, that's fine. I know for some churches, you're not meant to ask questions. It looks like a taboo or it looks like um, you're, you're questioning the man of God, which is not all right. But I'll ask you that if you feel your tithes are not going to these other folds, all those ministries, like the poor, the needy, the orphans, the um, widows, you need to look again at where your tithes are going and if indeed it's the right thing to do. What is the Spirit of God telling you and what do you think is the right thing to do? So thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, for me, what I'm hearing as a passive ask is the manipulation of everything. It's not that, and, you know, I don't know who is getting this wrong or not understanding it's not that you should keep your money and do nothing with it. That was clear from the onset. It's the manipulation from these leaders, from these pastors, that they twist the Bible or they twist the words. First of all, I'm taking responsibility for myself for not even getting acquainted with the Bible myself to understand it so well that nobody can manipulate me. So I take on that responsibility. But the fact that if we go to church, we trust, we, we want to trust God or we trust God and we trust his leaders and they manipulate and twist and turn the words in the Bible to make you give them. That's the problem because now I'm hearing that they don't even believe in God to feed, to feed them. Because the people that are asking questions that what's going to happen to pastors, how are they going to eat? Why are you but relying on you us? Don't believe God. Yes, they, 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 believe they don't God. believe in God because I, and they believe in God to provide for them. They don't because if they believe, they're not going to manipulate us. They will trust God to deliver them, to give them what they need. So it's all it's all twisted. It's all messed up. And that's the question that I'm asking myself. Yes, I would take the responsibility for what I hear, and what I accept. But secondly. The, the question of, you know, don't give is not even here. The question is that why the manipulation to force people to give, to force people to surrender to you? Why is it that it's my responsibility that you eat? You know, why is it that you can't work? Why is it that it's okay for me to go and work and you don't want to go and work to eat? You know, so why, who's asking the question that how are they going to feed? Why don't you look upon your father in heaven as well to give you food? Like he provides for the birds of the air. You know, you read those things to us in the Bible. Why don't you trust that? Why do you have to manipulate all those things? That's the question here. And I now believe that those pastors that are doing all these things, they don't believe in God. They don't believe in the God that they're promoting. They just know how to manipulate the Bible. They understand exactly what they're doing. Because they're reading those Bibles and they're twisting everything. And, you know, they, if you have challenge with understanding this or you think that a uh, pastor is doing something that they shouldn't be doing, then you really need to set yourself and set your own mind. This is fact. It's read to you in Matthew 20, 23, 23. You shouldn't forget it. It's so easy. It's not 23, 1 or whatever. Matthew 23, 23 is right there, plain, black and white. Read it and understand it for yourself. So don't blame anybody anymore. I'm not even blaming anybody. I'm just saying that. This manipulation must stop. If you don't believe, anyone that's asking you to do something by force or do something or manipulate you or twist your arm to do something, then that's wrong. And the people that are asking the question of, you know, how are they going to eat, they should look upon their own father like we do too. They should look upon God, you know, and not start telling us to look upon God and then they look upon us and they start scheming. <laughs> Skimming and planning on how they would twist the word so that we could give or manipulate us or put fear in us that we do something. No, it's wrong. It's totally wrong. And this is all I'm hearing from this right now. You know, that we should, first of all, you take responsibility for what you hear. Understand, get acquainted with the Bible, read and understand. And if you hear or see any pastor 
or any leaders or anyone that is manipulating you to give tithe to the church, know that that person doesn't even believe in God. So this is the time for you to pick race yourself <laughs> and not stay because it's clear if they believe in God, they will not manipulate you. They will not talk about tithe, tithe, tithe and make so much emphasis on tithe and not tell you to look at your poor people on the street. They won't tell you not to look, um, they won't tell you not to, um, your, your tithe comes first before you even give to your parents mm -hmm. or elderly mm -hmm. or before you look at charity. They won't be telling you that all they'll be talking to you about will be about, you know, how, what charity are you supporting and you're achieving your purpose. Those are the things that they'll focus on. They won't be focusing on you mm -hmm. having to bring tithe and talk about tithe and giving and using gimmicks like if you, um, if you withhold your tithe, your life will be tight or mm -hmm. your pocket will be tight. All those kind of nonsense. It's just so um. It's, you know, we just need to wake up, uh, guys. And if, again, I'm making emphasis on whoever is asking about pastor and who they should, how they're going to survive, you look upon God, just like we look upon God. Don't look upon us. Don't look upon anybody. Look upon God, what he's giving you, your talents, your abilities. Use those things, but don't use them in a manipulative way to um, oppress others or to make others do things that you know that are false. Go and work. Go and do something so that you would earn as well. And you don't have to look at congregation to bring and bring and bring. You know, God don't need our money. He doesn't need any bribe. He doesn't need anything. This is just a bribe to God. And obviously, I think also we are lazy as well because we, these people tell us things and we accept them because we want the easy way out. If we don't want the easy way out, why would they be telling us all these things and we believe? If you know you're working hard and you're doing all your best to make your life good and you're putting all your efforts and things, even if somebody said that if you don't give tight, you'll be tight, you know that that's not true because you're working hard, you're putting the processes in place. So why would your life be tight? It won't be tight. But because you're not doing anything, you want magic to happen. So when they tell you those kind of things, then you believe it and you think that tight is going to protect you or tight is going to protect your money or tight is going to give you work or jobs or anything. We need to be serious and believe the truth as well. Let the truth set us free. You know, so that's really what I want to say. Uh, it's getting hot, right? We had a very good session in the morning. I want to remind you that we actually have two sessions every day now. So instead of me coming in the morning and the evening, I, all, I have back to back. So two hours earlier, I'd had a program, uh, a session before now. So if you missed that, please go back and watch it. And uh, also every day, I'll be coming every time to talk about this, this same, time, this same particular time. And I will also be coming uh, and two hours before now to also... Uh, talk about other subjects. So I come on two times a day just for you to know. And uh, if you have not yet shared this link, if you have not yet shared this program, please go look for the share button and share the link. Okay, let me see some of the comments that are coming in. Let me see the comments that are coming in. Uh, I have that here right now. Irene Abiola said, tight and offering seem to be the most important thing our modern pastors believe. We give you tickets for prosperity, breakthrough, and even eternal life. Well, we know that's not true, right, from what we learned today. Uh, Roland um, Amaru says, this has been my message over the years. I have come under intense criticism for preaching these things that Pastor Sunday is preaching about today, but I'm not going to succumb to People's opinion against the revealed truth from the Bible. God bless you, sir. Jane Musaka says, Churches are no longer sensitive to the suffering of the ordinary people in the churches, and they claim to be spiritually designed. How can the Holy Spirit not be sensitive to such need of the people? Lord have mercy. Uh, then she also says, You are right, Queen Mayowa. So many manipulative strategies, schemes in the churches today, they should depend on their miracles to eat, not upon poor people in the church <laughs> to give them what to eat. Yep. Uh, Irene Abiola said, this video must go viral. So let us all go ahead and copy this video and send to all our friends. This video must go viral, uh, she says, uh, on the social media so that more children of God will be uh, set free. Uh, it is usually no money, no blessings from God. That's what they preach. 
Tony Akinyemi said, I once, I once had a church fly. I once read a church flower that says, if you don't pay your tithe to the church, you will not go to heaven. Ooh. How clueless and greedy are these so-called pastors. Uh, Toshuku says, these Levites or pastors are stupendously rich these days without plans for the poor. So therefore, I will have to up that responsibility from pastors and help the needy myself. Yes, that's when you know when you get to heaven, Jesus said it will be asking you, he's not going to be saying, Did you give money to the to the church or you didn't give money to the church? Jesus is not going to say, Did you give money or tithe and offering to the church? Jesus is not even going to ask you, did you bring tithe and offering to the church or not? Jesus is going to ask you, did you, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was naked, did you visit, did you clothe me? When I was in the hospital, did you visit me? When I was in the prison? So those are the things Jesus is going to ask you personally. Those are the things you are supposed to be using your money and your tithe and offering to do, first of all. And then you believe in the project of the church. If you believe in the pastor and you, you know, you are convinced, then you could take your money to the church as well. But it is mainly practice in the Old Testament to give tithe to the Levites, because they were not allowed to work. But today, even Paul worked. So, who is your Paul, purpose so that shouldn't work? One day, says, my school lecturer had told me about these things, but we, we just laughed. We were rebuking him because he went to another church. But now that I heard it from Pastor Sunday, it hit me deep in my spirit. Uh, Roland is saying people should just read the Bible, read Acts 17, 11, and you will see that it is not about what the pastor says, that we should stop this spirit of my pastor said this, my bishop said this, my prophet said this. What matters is what God has said. Uh, Betha Okoth says, thank God I'm in the right church because in our church, pastors work for their daily bread. They are there to teach and nurture us, the congregation, to live a godly way, in the godly way. That doesn't mean if you go to church, you don't need to give tithe and offering. This, but that's not a must. I mean, that is a must, it says, but that's really not a must because you don't give tithe and offering to the church only. You can use it to take care of the people in need. Shekhu Nawal said, when God's word is preached, it comes with the ability to do. If only the so-called men of God involved in this we humble themselves and not fight with the truth. We are set to change the body of Christ. Thank you, DSA, and God bless you. Benny Gibbs says, even in the church, Pastor, they've not asked of them talk less of community. I mean, they don't care for the church members, that is, talk less of the community. <laughs> Toshuku says, uh, the reason why most of these churches are, form is because, are formed is because of Titan offering. Everywhere you go to a church, Church is everywhere, yet evil is still at its peak. You say justice. Mm -hmm. It is the justice that's supposed to stop all the evil. Mm -hmm. And that's why you use tight and offering for to stop evil and to bring the justice of God. So he says, if I and you stop funding these churches, they will surely go down the drill. <laughs> Darlington says, for where, if they are real, if these pastors are real and if these churches are real, they will not go down the drill. If they will, you know, God will provide for them, really. But they have to start believing God. They are telling people to believe God. Let pastors and churches begin to believe God, too. Oluwato in Darlington said, For where? One silly pastor asked me to tell my children he is waiting for his tithe. <laughs> Though they are not members of his church, even. But he feels he has right to their wages and for now, for uh, before they started work, for... Uh, knowing them before they started to work. Imagine that blasphemy. <laughs> uh, Shioma is saying, for those people who are looking for Pastor Sunday's books and material in Nigeria, you could call her. She has her telephone over here. Yet today, I will say they are more concerned about the, their pockets. Woe unto them. <laughs> yeah, Jesus said woe unto them too. Irene Abiola said, this is what you refer to as a salmon pombele, no dilution. God bless you, sir, for teaching the whole truth always. Odafia Nigoro, pastors are just as humans as us. Pastors should also go and work. 
Roland Amaro say, you can shake my wall and see that God is raising fearless men who speak the truth without fear of losing title. Davis Agboje, what about when the pastors and teachers preach it and they don't do according to what they teach? Um, Nike Okwanuga said, thank God for you, for your life, Pastor Sunday. Uh, hallelujah. This is deliverance for a lot of Christians who have been robbed of their sweat. Uh, wrote and said, I wish there is a platform where I can sponsor the televising of this message. <laughs> Uh, Roland, you want to sponsor the televising of this budget? So where? Maybe we can, we can promote it here on Facebook. You know, you know, you get in touch with him. <laughs> and this sheet to said, I don't think they can do without talking about money in church these days. Eric Lindo, hello, dear a family from Cameroon. Evangelist Prince said, this is a good message for the body of Christ. He who called us is faithful to sustain us. Yes. Allah in Kansas, the devil is a liar. Who, why is this video frozen? Allah in Kansas, church service is mostly evening. Most pastors need to go and work nine to five and conduct evening services. <laughs> Not all pastors have been called to be in full time ministry. Most pastors' wives that are nurses in the MID have worked themselves out and grown old than their husbands. You know what? Uh, you know, I, I was, I didn't, you know, in my church, in our church, when I started our church, I never, I didn't start to receive salary from church and I didn't stop working till our church was 2,000 people, who were about 3,000 people. So any church that is 2,000 or 3,000 people will be able to sustain the church, the, the pastor. But uh, if you, you know, before then I was working and I bought my first car only uh, when the church was uh, over 2,000 people. Otherwise, I was working before then. Fred Siambe, the message cannot work on mainstream churches. It's our duty as members to go uh, to give tight to the poor, not to shut the help to them. God has blessed us to assist the needy. Yes. Gift Amos says, Now I have the privilege to go and look for the poor and needy and use my tight too. Yes, his responsibility has come upon you on all now. You are now have to use your tight and offering for the needy. <sighs> By the way, I, uh, this I told you to remind me about the pastor from <sighs> maybe we'll have to do it tomorrow. Where pastor Eric, yeah. <sighs> Emmanuel Shiji Oke as he says, you are just speaking the mind of God, sir. Many preachers have led the weightier matters and bang on things like tight that even Jesus did not concentrate on. Yep. Joy says, it saddens my heart how the spirit of mammon has crept into the church. Elizabeth says, we have given enough to the Levite. Let's get, go and go to the poor now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Monica, thanks so much, Pastor, for this teaching. God bless you. I have never heard this in any church before. Give to the poor, make you poorer. Yeah, that's what I will talk about that tomorrow. Maya he says, We need to put on our thinking cup and shine our eye very well now. <laughs> Kiro Jimadu said, my husband is a pastor and he has a job. Let pastors go find something to do as well. She said, share, share, share everybody. A lot of people need to be delivered from this madness. Anastasia said, this is what we have been taught due to our own negligence and ignorance. Anastasia said, the beautiful mind of God wants us to look after the poor 
widows, orphans, and Levites. You know, Saint Magaja said the pastor preneurs won't be happy with this message. All I need is say, share, share, share this message. Don't be afraid of what or ashamed of what people will say. Save a life, please. Gift Amos say this is like 419 people are practicing in the churches now. Jake OK said certain scriptures in have, have been overemphasized above others for the sake of manipulation. Try gold said pastors should know that churches are there to help the needy, not build their own businesses. Okay. These are the things that I wanted to share with you today. I want to also say that tomorrow we are going to have Queen, Queen Anastasia with us tomorrow. Queen Anastasia is supposed to, Anastasia McDonald, she's supposed to come on on the, on the topic tomorrow and the subject on the kingdom fruits. Tomorrow we are going to be talking on the kingdom fruits and we are going to be uh, demonstrating and you know, showcasing what people have been doing since they started listening to DSA uh, on this platform. So if you have been on this platform, we want to give you a bigger voice. We want to give you a bigger platform. We want to give you a voice. We want to help you and, uh, and uh, broadcast what you are doing to the world. We want to share your testimonies, your story with everybody. Uh, and... Um, so, you know, write to us, write to VIP at GodEmbassy.org, VIP at GodEmbassy.org. Tell us what you are doing. Give us the report of the fruits that your life has been producing since you started listening to DSA. And uh, we're going to help you to, get, to gain a better authority and a, a better recognition. So tomorrow we are going to listen to Anastasia McDonald. She's a lady that has started so many projects on Facebook. Uh, maybe five or seven projects, you know, live broadcast and all kind of things. So she's going to tell us and we're going to read uh, some of the work that she has done tomorrow. So if you have not yet shared this message, please go ahead and share the message. And um, the word is waiting to be delivered. You know, the word is waiting, <laughs> eagerly waiting for the deliverance of the sons of God, from the sons of God. So we must deliver them first before they go and deliver other people. And um, I hope everything is clear. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I'm going to be talking about this thing every day. Tomorrow I'll be talking about uh, some people believed. Let me tell you about the topic of tomorrow. Some people preach now that to give, if you don't give to the poor. If you give to the poor, that you'll become poor yourself. So to give to the poor is to be infected by poverty, by the spirit of poverty. So some churches don't want their church members to give to the beggars. They don't want them to give to the poor. They don't want them to give to the needy. They, they, they only say so upward. Just give upward. So upward. It's a demonic, demonic doctrine. It's coming from hell. It is not according to the scripture. And it is not by, from God. It is not even from the spirit of God. So that doctrine is hell, hell bound doctrine. And I'm going to debunk it tomorrow with the scriptures. I'm going to scatter it tomorrow. You know, we are going to show you tomorrow, you know, the word of God, what the word of God says actually about giving. Actually, the only people that God says we should give to more than any other person are the poor. The very same people that God wants us to give to are the ones these ones are telling us not to give to. Tomorrow is going to be hot, I bet you. Tomorrow, oh, bad news. It's going to be bad news to Satan tomorrow. It's going to be bad news to, yes, to Satan, to a lot of people that are, you know, propagating that kind of doctrine that so upward. You know, so tomorrow is going to be give to the poor means to become poor. Is that true or false? Is that true or false? So that's tomorrow. 
So invite your people. We're going to give you, because you must know the arguments too. You must know the scriptures. You must know why these things are wrong. You wanted to say something? No. Okay. Oh, you wanted to add it to it. Okay. Anybody want to share anything? I'm okay. just so happy right now. <laughs> you, are, you are just so happy. We're just enjoying this. You want to say anything? Okay. So, you know, write your comments. Let's see what you are going to write. If you have not yet shared the link, go ahead and share this message. Send to all your friends. And let them get delivered. Let them get their deliverance. And uh, let's set the people of God free. Let my people go. That is the cry of God. Heaven is calling for the people of God to be set free to go. Let my people go. Let my people go. Let's help God set his people free. And let's set the pastors free too. Because a lot of pastors, let me say this to their credit. A lot of pastors are actually doing these things only because that is what they saw people do. I was doing it myself. I was like that. I was, you know, thinking and preaching that the tithe and offering is only meant for the church. I was preaching that before. But I grow. And I thank God that uh, I, I was able to repent of it and to be able to preach the Bible right now. And um, I will tell you a lot, of, a lot of pastors are sincere. A lot of pastors, are, they want to do the right thing, but they just, just, they just don't know. That's why I will lead the trail. I'm going to lead the revolution to set all these pastors who are sincere, who are innocent, who are pure, and who want to do the right thing free. So uh, somebody has got to talk about it because environment is 50% of who we are. So because all these pastors are hearing the wrong thing and the wrong examples, they, they are not seeing the other examples. That's why they are copying. Not all of them. They, some of them might be evil, but not all of them are evil. They just don't know better. And that's why I personally believe that this message will also, also help pastors to get themselves free. Now, don't be afraid, and I want to talk to pastors not to be afraid that uh, they will not have money to survive. If you serve people with all your heart, you know, people are not blind. God will touch their heart, mm -hmm. and they will support you. So don't let the fear lead you to, you know, going against God, to, to become somebody that God will say woe unto you. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to hear the woe from God in the last days, even here on earth and in the last day, you better repent now and, you know, teach people to live for God, to do the weightier matters of the law, and all of that thing shall be added. God bless. See you tomorrow, 7 o'clock Ukraine time. That's two hours before now. Uh, actually, it's more than that now. It's like four hours before now, uh, every night. And then at this time, uh, like one and a half hours we do so two programs back to back we'll be back tomorrow uh, thank you for your time god bless bye i don't <laughs> yeah